keeping in mind that blame and severity create stakeholder uncertainty, as we discussed in the previous podcast. Then as we move beyond the most commonly studied type of crisis, transgressions, we can begin to find a number of types of crises where blame attribution is likely more complex and where perceived severity and personal impact will dramatically affect the perception of these crises. The second type of crisis are events. So what is an organizational event? Well, they differ from transgressions because the material blame for the crisis is less clear. While the organization may have direct and indirect culpability, it may not have necessarily done anything wrong. However, in the case of organizational events, these are still crises that directly involve and affect the organization and its stakeholders. What's particularly important about organizational events is the degree to which different stakeholder groups attribute blame to the organization, largely based on perceived personal impact or severity. So this is often telling about the likely outcomes of the crisis. It also helps us to better understand the connections between our stakeholder maps, issue management, and crisis response. So we'll work through some of the examples of types of events identified by previous research with cases illustrating some of the challenges emerging from events. So again, we'll go through the examples of types of organizational events and those cases. One of the common types of events that organizations face are mergers, whether successful or failed. These can catch people's interest because of what they mean for employees or what they mean for different groups. In about 2008, Lloyd's and TSB merged, and then in 2013, these banks were forced to split in order to meet competition rules and regulations in the UK. This left about 4.6 million customers in a different bank than they thought they were. Now, while all the customers were offered the same accounts, terms, and so on, this can not only create problems like we saw with the TSB website crashing, but it also led to redundancies with about 9,000 employees losing their jobs across the UK. Mergers and failed mergers have a host of legal, consumer, and certainly employee issues that emerge. Between the early 1980s and 2008, much of the West experienced consistent economic growth, but that has never meant that all industries and all organizations shared in that growth. However, since the economic crash of 2008 and changes brought on as a result of emerging digital economies, there have been a lot of industries and organizations facing economic downturns that forced the organization to act. Now that's not including the massive impact to the economy caused by the 2020 COVID pandemic. But we certainly saw this with the banking crash and we saw a lot of different models for dealing with this. However, one industry that has faced increasing problems in some parts of it is the retail industry. As traditional retail driven by high street shop locations is being minimized or replaced by the digital marketplace, a lot of companies have had to start making different kinds of decisions. Beginning in 2013, Swedish retailer H&M has been facing a lot of challenges, from downsizing its labor force to in 2017 announcing that because of shifts in the digital drivers that it is not going to be opening as many new stores in new locations. From a crisis communication side, these don't always translate into meaningful crises if they're managed well. However, they can, as consumer confidence begins to slide or employee satisfaction erodes, and we begin to find complaints and problems. Finally, depending on what country you live in and where you work, there is a reality of violence in the workplace that can range from hostile environments created by sexual harassment to shootings. In most cases, the organization is not directly to blame for these situations and is often one of the victims. However, they classify it in this category because there can be culpability and blame assigned to the organization. One very daft example of this was the 2016 altercation between UKIP members of the European Parliament, Steve Wolf, pictured on the ground after having been punched by the aptly named fellow UKIP MEP, Mike Hookham. Certainly this represents a problem for both of these public figures, but it's also a crisis for the political party UKIP, as well as the European Parliament to a lesser degree, because in this case, the violent incident occurred there. It's a transgression on the part of the boxing parliamentarians, but for their party, as well as the European Parliament, it's an organizational event. 
something that has happened that they have to manage, and where some of the blame could potentially be attributed by some stakeholders. It's also certainly an event that received a healthy chunk of news coverage, so it was something that did require a response. So from the ridiculous to the life-changing, organizational events represent a threat to organizations, groups, and public figures affected by them. But the question really is, what are the communication implications?